Listen, this is the number one thing that men struggle with in the trenches. And this is when you get past like their actual vices. I'm talking about the number one, like in day-to-day life that, that actually, that actually men struggle with. They struggle with their daddy issues and drugs and alcohol and shit like that. Like we've talked about on previous episodes, but the actual tangible thing, the thing that men struggle with and can't fucking nail down is this thing called... What's up, freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. And today we're going to talk about what, what you would consider work life balance, or really what, what really it comes down to is work life imbalance. And we're going to break this down how you, as a man, can overcome and conquer and destroy this whole work life balance, work life imbalance myth and bullshit here on today's episode of the Steve Eckert show, which is a show on how to flip the switch and have a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt, overcome and destroy the obstacles, preventing your success in your family, your fitness, your mindset and your business. So you could stop being a little bitch, get your shit together and start living life on your own fucking terms, all while you create your own personal freak freedom lifestyle. Guess what? Mr. Producer Tyson. I didn't look at the words on that. I stood right into the camera. It's pretty sad. It's episode number 45. Oh no, this is episode number 46, I think. No, or 47, 48, whatever one this one ends up being. And I barely memorize the intro. Fucking brain cells are going. But anyway, today we're talking about work-life balance on the Steve Eckert Show. And this is all about transforming you as a man from where you are to where you want to be, need to be, and fucking deserve to be. And you're learning to weaponize everything in your life, flipping the switch on how you think you operate and your mindset again in your family fitness and your business and this there's listen this is the number one thing that men struggle with in the trenches and this is when you get past like their actual vices i'm talking about the number one like in day-to-day life that that actually that actually men struggle with they struggle with their daddy issues and drugs and alcohol and shit like that like we've talked about on previous episodes but the actual tangible thing, the thing that men struggle with and can't fucking nail down is this thing called work-life balance, work-life balance. And we're talking about what they struggle with in the trenches on a day-to-day basis, having a career, having a job. And this could be even, be, even be successful men making tons of money or whatever. This is what they struggle with. And I wanna, I'll start you off with a, a quick story that this is actually a, a moment that I completely forgot about. It's crazy how you don't remember shit, but it's somewhere in your brain, in your memory, stored like supposedly everything you've ever seen in your life every license plate every person and face is somewhere in your brain and i guess that's what hypnotists do and they find that shit i was a guest on a podcast and this guy was asking me about what was the turning point in my life when i started really getting my shit together and started doing things the right way as a man as a husband as a father whatever you want and really started changing the way i operate to be who I am today. And it's always easy to say, all right, when, when I went to jail or when I went to join the Marine Corps, or when I started a business, or even when I had a, had my first kid, but it was actually none of those. Cause he kind of pushed it and he wanted to like, uh, uh, he wanted a better answer. And I could tell the way this conversation was going. And what it did was trigger this moment when my first, my first son was about, I don't even know, either a few weeks old or a, a couple of months old. Yes, that'd be you there. He's looking down like, yay, we're talking about me. So he was a, I don't remember even how old it was, but we had our gyms in New York. And since the Russian obviously just gave birth, she was not in the gym for however long, a couple of months after he was born. So, and also the few, you know, month, whatever, a few weeks before he was born. So that's a, a good amount of time. And we barely just opened up our, our locations, the actual physical location of a gym. So you're still not even profitable. You're behind on bills, behind on rent, just trying to make things happen, trying to grow and build and become profitable. And a kid is born. So I'm working for weeks and even months, seven days a week, 
doing everything in the business. I am the one doing all the person one-on-one personal training. I'm doing all the group training. I'm doing all the nutritional consultations. I'm doing all the sales, all the appointments, cleaning the fucking toilets. I'm ordering equipment, buying equipment, restocking shelves of, of supplements and drinks and whatever else. Literally everything, seven days a week, I'm in there from 4 a.m. because I'm getting there early before the 5 a.m. session start. So that means I'm waking up at like three something, getting there 4 a.m., all the way leaving until after the last class is done after like 8 p.m., then having to do all the additional work that gets needed to done and getting the place cleaned up for the next day. So I'm there till like 10 o'clock, getting home at 11, going to sleep right away pretty much and doing it the next day, seven days a week for months. And one day I came home from doing this and the Russian's there with Tyson. He's like this little uh, alien raisin looking thing. Still looks pretty similar to this day. Oh, he's making all kinds of faces. He's ready to throw something at me down there. So... I get home from doing this seven days a week and the Russian's like, hold on, I want to take up. And I I picked up Tyson or something. He was actually awake. Normally he'd be asleep or who knows what the sleep schedule was. I really would barely get to see him for the first several, a couple months of his life because I'm just hustling, grinding, doing the thing, building the business, building the empire. And I get home one day and he's awake. So I, I, I pick him up or whatever. And as I'm holding him, the Russian's like, hold on, I want to take a picture of you holding him. And I got to find that. I still have the picture somewhere. And I got to look for it and I have it. I'll try to attach it to this, this video. She took a picture and she's like, I want to save this picture to show Tyson when he's older. And so let him know how hard you worked and everything you were doing, all this, like I was fucking grinding and what I was doing for this family. And as much as it seemed like this was like some motivational thing, this was actually a, a fucking wake up call that made me flip that switch to start operating in business a, a different way. Cause I realized at this point, like if you're having to take a picture to remind them of how hard I was working, meaning I'm hardly there for any of these events in the first couple of weeks or months of life, because I'm just building this business. Like I'm literally becoming my father. Now, it, if a father's not there, all a kid knows is that a father's not there, whether it's because he's building a fucking empire like we were in the gym, or if he's disappeared or left or is out drinking and gambling like my father was doing, but an absent father is an absent father. So I realized I'm becoming my father by not being present and there enough for my kids. And if that's what I'm going to remember for, just that I was working hard, like, fuck no, I realized shit, something's got to change. That's when I started getting into coaching and thinking about uh, working on leadership and teamwork and communication and problem solving. So I could start building a team and start delegating and all these other things, hiring a team and building a team and leading a team and all these different things because work life was imbalanced. And that's what we're diving into here today is work life imbalance. Cause listen, work life balance is freaking bullshit. Like fuck balance. I don't want balance. Balance is boring. Balance is average. Balance is, is mediocre. Balance is mediocre. And it's just not good enough. I need, I, I want, I want work life. How about this work life synergy, work life satisfaction, work life discipline, like work life domination. That's what I'm looking for. Or how about this even work life happiness and fulfillment. That's what I want to do. Like for me, doing hard shit all the time. We talk about that a lot here on the show and doing scary shit and bold shit and fun shit and impactful shit. That to me is, is contributes to the work life balance. That's what really being a, a freak father, this is what being a freak father is all about. Like this all just might say, it sounds fantasy and impossible when I break down the way life can be for a man as a, as a, as a husband, as a father, as an entrepreneur, as a leader, as he's building an empire, but it, it's, freaking possible to have, it is possible to have it all. And listen, this is one of my superpowers to be able to create that work life symmetry, like getting all the shit done that you want to get done to the degree you want to get done with excellence, like getting people to do shit that they previously thought was impossible. This is what I do in the, in the freak father Alliance, the men's mentorship group, group coaching program. And, and if you want information about that, just send me a message. I'll hook you up. I'll get you started. I'll get you up and running immediately. But that's really what we do is, is uncover and realize the possibilities and discover and, and, and exploit the opportunities that, that maximize your strengths and weaponize your weaknesses. This is what we do in the, in the Freak Father Alliance. And this is possible when it comes to work-life balance. And 
It's all about living life on your own freaking terms and unlocking your own personal freak freedom and self-expression. And, and just like we always say, stop making fucking excuses. It is possible. You just claim that it's hard and you think it's too hard and all this other stuff. But listen, it's 100% possible to have this work-life balance that we're talking about. And that's balance between your personal life, your professional life, your health and fitness, your own, not just personal life, meaning your family, but also your own personal for yourself. Like you need that time also for yourself. And this is all 100% possible. So we've, we've used this, this example before. But I want to ask you this. If, if I asked you to open up your calendar and what percent of your calendar was, was personal? What percent was professional? So open up your calendar. What percent is personal? What percent is professional? And I know the answer because I, I talk to men about this all across country, all across the world, tens of thousands of them. And it's always 95% is professional, is, is business building and his work and his sales calls and his all this other stuff. And then the, the family gets the leftovers. That is complete work-life imbalance. And that's why it's a struggle. Then they get home and they're all stressed out and they're bringing the worst of themselves home and their family and their kids and, and are getting the leftovers of them. And it leads to stress and burnout and overwhelm and, and struggle and hardship and, and anxiety. This, these are the things causing that work-life imbalance. So some of these things off the top, we're, 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 we're going to go into a different way of thinking of overcoming work-life balance, but there are the tangible things like, and, and you can look at previous episodes, all these things have been covered in previous episodes, like having family routines, rituals, and rules by having a morning routine, end of night routine, a start of work day routine and an end of work day routine. These are all separate episodes. So you can go back in the log and check them. So I'm not going to dive into these. I'm just going to re reference you to these episodes because we're going to go into a different layer of talking about overcoming work-life balance. We there also to do it. There's, we have episodes on, on goal setting, on boundaries, on creating your own freak freedom lifestyle. Go check out all these episodes I'm talking about FYPJ, fuck your private jet about if this is what it takes to get a private jet, neglecting your family and not being able to spend the amount of time you want with your kids, I don't want any part of it. Like we, we want to create the life you don't need a vacation from. And you have to realize that this is a possibility. This is a reality. I was at a, at a workshop that I was speaking at and there was, there was some speakers and high level entrepreneur, entrepreneur coaches that coach other entrepreneurs, coach millionaires that create millionaires, like multimillionaires are so successful. And they're talking about productivity and talking about their schedule and all this other stuff and talking about that they, they give, and this was some three or four different people. I've seen this over the last, I don't know, four or five, six months, 20 to 30 minutes per day with their kids when they're in town. So if they're not in town, they're obviously none, but when they're in town, 30 minutes a day, with your kids and they say, that's enough. That's all they need of me. And to me, like that is imbalance. Like I can't imagine 20 to 30 minutes a day only with my kids. That means that you are letting someone else raise your kids. You are not fathering your kids. You cannot possibly be a father to your kids in 20 to 30 minutes a day that are still living at home. That's fucking nuts to me. So that's the opposite of what we're talking about. So to, you have to consider the source of who you're listening to for productivity and work-life balance and your goals and all this other stuff we're talking about and lifestyle goals. Because listen, I have a hard time taking advice or listening to, to how they do it when it comes to business of someone that doesn't have any kids. I have a hard time listening to advice from someone that doesn't have kids or someone that says they only want to spend 20 to 30 minutes a day with their kids. I can't, there's nothing you, you, I can't follow your strategies and tactics in business. I could probably pull and extract a couple of good little lessons from you, but that's about it. I cannot get anything much from you when that's the way that you operate. Cause that shit doesn't work for me. And listen, it might work for someone else. And if it does, I think you're fucked up, but it's hard for me to take advice from someone that doesn't have kids or only spends 20 to 30 minutes a day with their kids. That's fucking nuts to me. So Let's dive back in. Let's go into work-life balance. We, those other ways that I said, there were all previous episodes on. Those are a little more tangible ways to deal with it and think about it and perspective on it. But we're going to go into it from a different, complete different angle. First off is 
everything always starts with you as the fucking man and inside your head, believing that it can be a reality. Like you first need to un understand and really believe and have faith that it is possible for you to have this work-life fulfillment and work-life symmetry that we're freaking talking about. The first thing you have to do, check. All right, you have to have that belief in it. Sounds so simple and stupid, but it just doesn't exist usually. Most people think, oh, I can't do it. Not in my industry. I can't. I work 10 to 12 hours a day and all this other shit. Again, go back, rewind a couple minutes which says stop making fucking excuses. So first off, believe it could be reality. Next, yeah, there's going to be different seasons in life where you're going to have to go through some sprints and different phases and different points in life where you have to work more than you normally do. And you have to pull some all nighters and all this other stuff. There's actually a couple of episodes coming on down the line in a few weeks. There's one on productivity and there's another episode on anti-productivity. I can't explain the whole thing now, but there are just understands there's ups and downs and flows and different seasons where even though they're not, they're never going to be balanced. You might be heavier on the work side for a while because you're in the middle of a project or starting a new business or whatever it is, but that doesn't mean you neglect the other side. So realize there's going to be what looks like imbalance. But if you follow the things that we're talking about today, these almost intangible things, these almost soft skills, then you will still have that work-life symmetry and happiness and fulfillment that we're talking about. And realize it's never going to be freaking perfect. Never going to be perfect to get that out of your head, but it is freaking possible to have it all. So this leads us to being, all right, so should I be selfless and just give myself to the family and give myself to the business and be so selfless and not worry about it? Or should I, do I have to put myself first and just be selfish? And people say, oh, well, you have to put yourself first because you can't, provide for other people and help other people and have balance and, and be who you need to be in all these situations. If you're not first taking care of yourself and that's 100% fucking true. You do need to take care of yourself, but you can't be so far on the end of the spectrum where you're just such a selfish motherfucker. Like you're thinking, all right, I'm, I want to start this business. So I'm going to work all these hours a day, but I also want to run a marathon. So I'm going to, I'm going to run for two, three hours a day. I don't want to get skinny. So I'm still going to lift weights three times a week. And then I got my jujitsu class that I go to four times a week. That is going too far on the end of the spectrum of selfish. But then on the other side, you don't want to get all fat and nasty and lazy because you just want to deal with, uh, help your family out all the time and always helping your, your brother move and then helping your neighbor do something in the yard and doing all this stuff. And you're just being completely selfless. You need to find that chemistry and that symmetry between selfish and selfless. That is also where work-life balance comes in, where you give enough of yourself out, but not too much of yourself, where you fucking lose yourself and don't even know who you are anymore. And you can't even have your own foundational needs freaking met. And to me, what I, what I come up with for this is, is self-symmetry. That's what that's the self-symmetry is that line in between selfish and selfless. And this is all part of work-life balance. It's a different perspective I want you to think about when it comes to work-life balance. Like being, having that, that structure and that stability and neither, neither side is causing a disturbance or a tension. There's no disproportion in, in yourself and in your energy. That's when you start thinking that way and you start getting that self symmetry where you can have enough time to be who you need to be so you can give and help your people around you. So you're selfish enough so that you can be selfless, but not too selfish where you don't have any space or time or energy to be selfless. Makes sense? Makes sense to me in my head. So find that in between, that balance between selfish and selfless. That is self-symmetry. That is one of the steps after believing that it's true and after realizing there's going to be ups and downs in different seasons is having that self symmetry. And again, that's just like work-life symmetry, work-life chemistry, work-life satisfaction and fulfillment and happiness. The next thing, which we've talked about also a good amount here on the show is intentionality, intentionality and having being present. So when you're doing something, you are so dialed in and locked into what you're doing that when you go do the other thing, you could be so dialed in and locked into that 100% all in, all out, all the motherfucking time. You are the flame keeper with intentionality and presence. So when you're with your kids, you're not doing bullshit, not even thinking about work and stressing. Yeah, it's going to creep in. You're going to think about money and the bills and the ups and downs of the business. But in general, for the most part, you are completely present, completely intentional, detached from the bullshit, detached from the work. And 
intentional. You have work-life intention. So you know when you're in the work side, what to do when you're in the life side, how to, how to act and respond. And it takes intentionality. It takes focus. So the next thing I want to ask you is, all right, let's, let's break this down. Let's ask a couple of these questions. If you, uh, wh- where are you, where are you wasting time? So when you say, oh, I don't have time for all these different things, I guarantee if we check marked all your time and the things you're doing throughout your day and we picked it apart, we'd find so many fucking places where you are wasting time. So where are you wasting time is the first thing. Then I guarantee you we'll find places where energy is leaking, where you're leaking energy. And there's so, this is such a, a problem for men leaking energy that next week there's an entire episode just on being a leaky man. It's, it sounds fucking weird and crazy and odd, but we're going to be de- diving into that. So where are you leaking energy? Where's energy oozing out? You're wasting energy and giving it away. Meaning you're probably too far on that selfless spectrum. On the wasting time part, you're probably too far on the, for the most part, on the selfish spectrum. You're spending too much time, wasting too much time doing shit. Like, listen, if you're fucking broke, you shouldn't be spending an hour doing a morning routine and doing your little ice bath every day and your, and your sound bath and all this other shit and going for a three mile run and spending four hours in the gym. Yeah. You need to take care of yourself, but you need to modify the amounts of time that you, do, that you need to, to take to do it. If you're fucking broke or if you're not spending enough time with your family or your kids, you can't just be doing all that shit all the time. That's that too far end on the selfish spectrum. So where are you wasting time? Where are you leaking energy? And here's another one. Where are your goals not aligned? I had a client recently told me it within this year and is anything is possible, but he wanted to uh, train for a marathon and a bodybuilding show pretty much at the same time. Like those are very opposite end of the spectrum goals. So you need to make sure your goals are aligned. Like if you want to build a, a business, when I, when I first was growing the gyms, my gyms in New York, I, I thought I wanted five gyms that each profited a million dollars each to make $5 million. And as I was with my coach, with, with Bedros was coaching me, walking me through this. And he's like, all right, why do you, where'd you come up with that number? Why that number of gyms? And we broke it down and realized, and, and then also we talked, talked about the lifestyle I wanted to live. It wasn't conducive. They didn't match up. I would, what it was going to take to get there wouldn't allow me to do what I really wanted to do up here. It was conflicting. It was pulling in opposite directions of the, the goals I had, which is why we started making those shifts. And this was after that moment of the picture that the Russian took me with, with Tyson, when I started really going deeper into hiring coaches and personal development and leadership. This is when we started working on a whole different direction, going with the business and taking things online and, and delegation and leadership. So where are your goals not aligned? Where are they competing with each other and clashing with you and causing friction where they don't, it doesn't make sense because that is going to make you waste time. It's going to leak energy when your goals are not conducive to each other. So where are your goals not aligned? Now, the next one is, all right, what are your priorities? Is it, is it more important to you to have time off with your family or is it more important to you to make a certain amount of money? And do you need to be, what, what is that certain amount of money? Why do you need to make that certain amount of money? Is that even a priority? Yeah. You want to make a shitload of money, but maybe you're, you're all skewed in the amount that you need and you do need to make more than you think usually. But, uh, I have another client who he, he has a, a, a business arrangement with his partners. He runs a, runs a business and he wants to live a few months out of the year out of state down in Florida. And all right. If you're there, that's the lifestyle you want to live at this point in life, at this stage of your career, after d- decades in your industry, but then you're feeling like you're missing out of things by not being in the office so much. So what is a priority? Being at this stage and living this lifestyle you want to live at this point in your life or missing out on some of the small, m- minute day-to-day stuff that, you can, that, that you're not really missing out. What's the worst case and you miss that stuff? Probably nothing. So what are your priorities? And your priorities need to be aligned with the goals so that you don't leak energy and you don't waste fucking time. All this stuff works together with being that self symmetrical person in between selfless and selfish. See how we're tying this all fits together in creating that work life work life balance. I want you to wanted you to think about work life balance in a different way than we normally think about it. All right. And the next step is going back into the intentionality piece. But I, I talk to men all the time in the Freak File Alliance about be the one, be the one. 
Meaning be that man that your family looks to. Be that one that your team looks to, looks up to, and wants to emulate because you're showing up in each of those scenarios with intentionality on fucking fire because you are the flame keeper. You're keeping the, the goals and the dreams and the flames and you're keeping the fire burning. How do you do that? And how do you, how do you really be the one, that one that they look to and like, yeah, that's my dad or the other side. Yeah, that's my boss or that's that. That's my manager, whatever it is. Start off by controlling your fucking emotions as a man, control your anger as a man, control your anxiety as a man and earn the right to be the one earn the right like when it comes let's talk on the family side when you have time with your family you are so intentional and so present and so dialed in and so interactive and so not working on your work you fucking blow them away with being the father that you are they're just blown away by it so when you need to go and do some stuff on the work side and dive in the family's like fuck yeah you do what you got to do like you've earned the right to go and do that You've earned the right to do that because you were so intentional when you have the time and you make the time and you're all in and you're intentional and you block out the bullshit when with your family, when it's time that you have to go and now go to work side, you are almost given the, the, the permission, given the pass, the pass to go and do it. Like no one's going to be upset or, or pissed off about it, or you're not going to have to feel guilty because you've earned the right because you blow them the fuck away with the time you have when you have it with them. You make it so much fun and so interactive and you're so uh, uh, aware and present. And then the same thing on the work side. When you're at work, you are so fucking dialed in because you know you already did it over on the family side. So now when you get to work, you are diving in. You are, are treating the, your, your team like family. You are leading the way. You are getting the, your fingernails dirty when you need to and, and, and carrying some of the load and the burden of the team and doing what needs to get done to accomplish the mission. Then when it comes time to go and spend a month away from the, the company, the team's like, fuck yeah. Because you're blowing them away with your leadership and your teamwork and your camaraderie and your culture and your character. They're like, fuck yeah, go away for a moment. We got this. We got this. You go and do that because you earn the fucking right because you blew them away from it. You earn the right. You earn the time off. You earn the right to, to not have to work at night or you earn the right to go for a long workout, whatever it is that you need to do because you blow them the fuck away with your intentionality and your presence when you're there. Like we're talking overboard. People talk about, oh, I just want to be more present. No, we're not talking about being more present. We're talking about 10X and 100Xing that motherfucker. Like diving in deep. Like nothing else exists in the fucking world at that moment on both sides of that spectrum. So that's the next stage. Be the one with intentionality, earn the right, blow them the fuck away. And from there, next one is take them along for the ride. Get, the, get them involved. Get the family involved in some of your personal goals. Get the team, your, your, your workers, employees involved in some personal goals. You want to run a marathon, get your family involved and they all train, you train together. Get your team involved and you're all trained together. When you can combine this stuff, that's what we talk about, creating the, the life you don't need a vacation from. Take your people along for the ride. Have the family meetings. We did an entire episode on family meetings and family goals. We have a family bucket list of hobbies and activities and family values and core values. We did a whole other episode on core values. This is episode 40 something. There is epi so many episodes for you to dive into. You're literally getting coached each week on here. You follow these tips. You can have work-life balance like a motherfucker. You could be, you follow these tips. You'd be a, you could be a millionaire. So take them along for the ride. And not just on family trips, but when you're working, get your, your family and, 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 involved in your work if, if possible. Imagine that where you're actually working together and building these dreams together on something that you have a superpower in and passion on. We just talked about a couple weeks ago about your superpowers and, and weaponizing and monetizing your superpowers. Imagine being able to do that. Like that is a creating a life you don't need a vacation from. Like when I'm going to work Operation Black Site and I'm going to be an instructor there and going to do some speaking or whatever, family comes with me. They interact. They do all the fight training. They do all the shooting training. They all do the escape uh, training and, and they sit in on all the speakers and we're also hanging out together the entire time. Then we have the nights together, the early mornings together. They come and work out with the group in the morning. Like immerse your family as much as possible. I understand in some industries it might be hard, but maybe you're going on a travel, a family, uh, a business trip. And even if your office is paying for it or whatever, 
or you're paying for it, whatever the scenario is, pay that extra money and take your family along for the ride. Get the hotel room, let them chill and hang out. So at least when you're done with the function, you can go back and hang out with them. You could travel together and still be connected and not be away for as long as it would have been. Like I have a, an event coming up in Colorado next or in a couple of months from now, a Squire program. That's a father and son program that we now have licensees all over the country. If you want information on that, just send me a message. I will hook you up. So we do our own Squire programs here in California, but then we travel around to other locations for licensees that run the program themselves. I'm going out to Colorado for this guy's first event that he's running as a licensee of the Squire program. Now I could take a day to go travel there and I need to get there a day before. I, I want to get, I don't need to, I want to get there a day before. Like we said, blow them the fuck away, go all in all out all the time. So I want to be there a day before to have a day to spend with the guy, talk to him, check out the place. So I would have to have a travel day, a day before, the day of the event, and then a travel day back. So I could be gone four days, maybe even up to five if I'm going to stay out and, and do a little more there. Four to five days, I would be gone from the family. Instead, it's only like a 14-hour drive or something. I don't even know how long. I, really, I didn't even look it up. It doesn't even matter. I don't even know. I'm going to take the R, an RV that we have, and we're going to drive the RV as a family and go to do the Squire program all together. So we're traveling together. They're going to be there. Tyson's going to be there helping me out with the Squire program because we have a, an ongoing continuous program that men that join the Squire program, the fathers come and jump onto coaching with me in the Freak Father Alliance and their sons join Tyson in Freak Fit, which is a kids fitness mindset, nutrition, workout training online program for kids. So he's coming with me to help out in the Colorado Squire program. So we're now connecting. We're some finding how to integrate the family and the, and the work and the business together. We're also traveling together, even if they weren't going to help out with the program. But there's been times where I was going to a three day event where it was like literally just me. There's no way to involve the family in it. There was no workout they can join, but they still traveled with me. They hung out in the hotel. They went and go did some stuff during the day. We worked out together in the morning. I'd go do my thing all day. I'd have dinner for the event. I'd come home after that. We'd hang out and chill, play some games, do whatever. But we're still there and they're hanging out in the hotel. They're having fun. They're getting to go explore and see different cities and whatever else. Take your people along for the ride. This is what work life, not balance. Here's another way I want you to think of it. Work life freedom. That's what it's all about. Work life motherfucking freedom. That is the goal here. Not balance, freedom. And this isn't new to us. This idea of work life balance is not new. We've been doing this shit for years, over two decades of running our own businesses, living together, working together, in, in the family, with the business, working from home, married with kids, kids at homeschool, we homeschool ourselves with dogs. We have mastered this, this work-life balance, work-life fulfillment, work-life freedom. This isn't just some cool new idea we have or hobby to start coaching and whatever else. This is our lifestyle we've literally had for decades. We've been doing this for years. And yeah, we've made all the mistakes there are to make. We've learned all the lessons. And now that's why I'm here sharing it with you. And this is what exactly we do in the Freak Father Alliance is help men overcome these work-life imbalances. And this is what it's all about. And, and we do that also, also by helping them create mem talk about creating memorable experiences for their family, create a, a work and life schedule that fits their lifestyle, again, with those family rules and rituals and routines that we talked about. All the things we talked about in the past, the time blocking, the boundaries. These are all the things we work on in the Freak Father Alliance, which is a men's mentorship program, group coaching program, working on your mindset, your muscle, your money, your mission, and your meaning as a man. I, I help, literally help entrepreneur fathers and men develop a no excuses mindset so they can build more muscle, make more money, have more meaning, and attack their mission to create their ideal lifestyle with time freedom for their families. If that's not a statement of what work-life balance is, I don't know what the hell is. That's what it's all about when it comes down to work-life balance. And that's what we do in the Freak Father Alliance. It's, it's basically just doing shit that you love to do, that you have passion and superpower for with the people that you love, meaning your team, your family, your kids, where you're making an impact and making a huge freaking difference. You're making a shitload of money while you do it with time freedom for your family and all your other passions that you want to do on the side and your hobbies and living your ideal freak freedom lifestyle. That's what work life motherfucking balance, AKA work life freedom is all about.
So start thinking of it from this perspective and go back to some of those previous episodes that will show you exactly how to make this shit happen. If you have any questions on this, let me know. If you want information on joining the Freak Father Alliance, the men's mentorship coaching program, send me a message. I'll get you hooked up. We'll get you onboard. We'll get you up and rolling. It includes a full integrated fitness program, the Infinite Freak Fitness Formula, which is the last workout program you ever need, which you can also get separately. And also, if you join the Freak Father Alliance, your sons and daughters can join Tyson's Kids Freak Fit absolutely free when you're in the free, as long as you're in the Freak Follow Line. So send me a mess on that. If you need any help with that, let's start working on work-life freedom. I want to hear in the, in the comments down below, what are some of your struggles you have when it comes to work-life balance and, and listen to this again and again. And I guarantee you, this will help you overcome that. Let's start working towards work-life freedom freedom. Send me a message. We'll talk about it. We'll get you up and running in the Freak Father Alliance. And in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.